This episode brought to you by Stamps.com. Why go to the store to get stamps when you can have them printed right at home for your convenience? Also brought to you by Movement, one of the fastest growing watch brands shipping to over 160 countries across the globe. Let's see what's on YouTube. Hey, critic, did you remember to leap today? What? Then you leaped again, and then yeah, leap, leap, and leap, 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 and leap. then again you leap, and then you leaped into then you the leap. mother. Yeah, leap, 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 critic, leap, leap to the leap, leap to the leap, leap to the leap, leap, and leap with leap, leap. leap. then leap, leap, but leap, and critic, leap, leap as well. Am I the only one that felt like this movie was everywhere? Leap, or Ballerina as it's known in other countries, is a 2016 French and Canadian production that was released in America in 2017. And maybe it's just me, but I remember this film being advertised like crazy. Not really on TV or in theaters, but everywhere online. If you were on a site that had anything to do with watching videos or movies, chances are there were ads for it all over the place. I guess the question is who had the distribution rights and why the hell did they need to make so much money out of this at the time? Yeah, that answers a few things. Yep, allegations were rising about Weinstein's, well, rising, and this was one of the last movies they distributed, probably meaning they were desperate to make a few dimes off of it. While the worldwide gross did turn a profit, it wasn't exactly a critical darling. And there's a reason. It's kind of fucking insane. It's a film you can clearly tell what it's stealing from, but it doesn't have an understanding of what made the sources it's stealing from so memorable. To its credit, it is so weirdly put together and oddly directed, I guess it does make it memorable for different reasons. So, was it worth seeing this film's mug posted all over the place for so long? Let's take a closer look to find out. This is Balalipa! Exclamation point. The film takes place in 1880, when denim shorts were all the rage, and focuses on a girl named Felice, played by Ellie Fanning, who constantly tries to escape the orphanage with her friend Victor, played by Dane DeHaan's replacement, Nat Wolf, trying not to blow her cover. Where is Felice? I love a movie that chants don't judge by appearances opens by clearly mocking someone who looks funny. Go get Felice! That's Mel Brooks, by the way, and Kate McKinnon as Mother Superior. Both these voices were added later for the US version. In fact, McKinnon plays three roles altogether. And one of the oddest aspects is the film clearly has lit movements for an American dub. But half the time, they still seem off. A plan so A, we don't need a plan B. Let me see. I get that with the replacements, but even the actors who were there from day one don't always seem to be synced up. Children today have no manners. Go find another fool. I'm young, my legs work, yours don't. If you fail to get the part, then you must leave the ballet. Is that clear? Let's go eat, huh? Felicity's escape plan fails, but that doesn't mean she can't do her free-spirited dance that shows what a lovable scamp she is. <laughs> Deploy enchanted head shake in three, two, one. <laughs> You may also notice the animation isn't great, but it's not really bad either. There's actually several times where it's really beautiful to look at, but other times it kind of looks like a Wii game. In fact, they repeat this dream sequence she has over and over and over with no variation. The least you could do is throw in Jimmy Stewart with some Disney flowers. So yeah, it's inconsistent, but competent enough. I know you have this dream of being a dancer. Dreams are not reality. Agreed. Oh, I'm so giving you the Tarantino mother treatment when I'm Misty Copeland. Let's see, got the angel-eyed innocent with a dream, a repressive environment, a quirky love interest. What other tropes can we throw in? Um... Sure. Ta-da! Chicken wings! 
Whoa! Chickens were harmed in the making of this movie. They didn't even need to be. I see you! They use his invention to escape, and what's even more random than this out-of-nowhere slow-mo? How about this line? Whoa, fireflies? Stay focused! Yep. Why was that even there? Waho! A train! Waho! Grass! Waho! Air! Oh. They discover her mother's music box was broken, but thankfully Victor can not only fix things, he can force exposition like a Kingdom Hearts game. Seeing as this is the one thing that was in your crib when you were left outside the orphanage, you should take a bit more care of it. That was so natural, the way you words. They make it to Paris, and for all the random lines dropped in this film, this one is so awkward I bust a gut every time I hear it. Love your mustache, mister! Oh, my wife hates it. Ah, yes! <laughs> oh, my wife hates it. I think today will be the day I kill her. Or get a divorce from her. Nah, it's the 1800s. Killing her is easier. Get a Victor. They get separated though, and Victor says he'll meet her back on the bridge at the same time tomorrow. I will return! Victor! And then I want you to say I will return like we're doing a parody of Titanic for some reason, and then crow like a rooster because movies. She makes it to Paris's greatest ballet school and tries to live out her dream of becoming a dancer. Again, the animation here is really damn good. I guess they even brought in star dancers from an actual school to get down the ballet movements. I'll definitely give credit when this movie goes above and beyond. You're a thief! I, I wasn't stealing! She comes across a member of the cleaning crew named Odette, played by Carly Rae Jepsen, who saves her from being turned in, but she wants to know more about the school. And what she did? That crazy jumpy thing. What was that? That is the official term, crazy jumpy thing. Good guess. You're the first person to show me any kindness in this city. Well, yeah, we're French. Odette does reluctantly take her in, only to discover she stays at a mean woman's house named Regine, also played by McKinnon, as her maid. It's not clean. Oops! Oh, look what you did. Well, that technically messes up your house, so... Regine has a bratty daughter named Camille, played by Maddie Ziegler, still hitting it out of the park with these movie roles. Reality check, little rat. You're nothing. Yesterday I saw... Don't be insolent! Jesus, you're making Linus from Sharkboy and Lava Girl look like a Fuller House kid! Camille and Felice surprisingly don't get along, and Camille throws her music box out the window. No! Wow, this might be the only time I ever say this, but LeBron James could scream better. No! The music box is a blitter, actually held up pretty good. When a mailman enters to give Camille an acceptance letter to the ballet school, but Felice intercepts it and pretends to be her. Oh, Frank, can you do a voice real fast? Well, yeah, sure, what do you need? Um, only not as lame. Oh, um, perfect. Really? Nah, I don't care. You are here because your mother sells the best prime rib in Paris! Brian Bless's provocative role as drunk Pavarotti surprisingly got no Oscars. <laughs> she is Camille Gimli belching on the toilet would have more charm than this! She's put with the other students as the ballet instructor informs them that in each class, a student will be eliminated until there's only one left to star in his production of The Nutcracker. Every girl in this room has a chance to dance in my new ballet. Except you, Camille. I've taken all three noses with that move. I hang them on my wall. I'm quite sick. In between classes, she meets up with Victor, who once again is given the music box to fix. He says he got a job with a famous builder while he explains the long, complicated events that led to it. And then I met this super guy named Maddie. Everyone totally loved us. It was a real gas, and we were on fire. Honestly, I'm shocked it took him this long to make a fart joke. I'm pretty sure the original French version had more. <laughs> New best friend works for a certain Gustav and Bell. I wasted no time in showing off my amazing adventure skills. Yeah, that does sound like a story that came out of a bird's ass. May I know how you came to be at the oh. ballet? So she gave me the letter that allowed her oh, into liar. the ballet. You're liar. When you're lying, you're no shivers. Should we be concerned that he knows that? You know what? He's 13 in French. If that's all he notices about her, we should probably be thankful. Rise. She fails to get up from the splits, which should mean termination, but it looks like someone actually does worse. And I will admit this is one of the few genuine laughs in the movie. Very well. 
until the next audition. Mountain next to my noses. That's right, we're almost as cruel as gymnastics classes. Felicity stumbles across one of the best young dancers in the theater named Rudy, but she also stumbles across Odette. What are you doing here? I can explain. There is nothing to explain. There's literally tons to explain, but I guess we can do the silent treatment. But Odette reveals, get this, she used to be a dancer too! Whoa, oh, oh, somebody call up Chubby Checker, because we got quite the twist! Jump up, ring this bell, land, and do not splash the water. She picks it up in, judging by the daylight, less than an hour, and suddenly all her lessons are learned at about the same speed. Yeah, all these girls that have been training for months or even years are suddenly outwitted by Miyagi's dance school of speedy convenience. You. Me. Up. Please move aside, I am talking to the boy directly behind you. She does indeed make him go up as he confesses he has the hots for her. We do not follow city rules, yes? Yep. Ah! Jesus, that went south fast! Ah! Is it me or did she break her arm sliding down that thing? Well, she's dead, I mean fine, and she tells Victor that her new joy boy is not only a stud, but also a prince. And before you ask, no, that in no way contributes to the story whatsoever. There's this boy, Rudolph, who it turns out is a real Russian prince with a castle and peacocks. And he threw me off a building and tried to kill me and my arm bends in three different directions and he has dimples. A boy? What type of boy? Becoming jealous, Victor shows off what his boss has been working on. A little thing called the Statue of Millions of Historical Inaccuracies. Soon to go to America. The story we're talking mice got this down better than you. Howdy, I'm a cowboy. Truth is, I've done so many of these, I can't remember if I did a cowboy one at all. If I did, I'm his brother. I want to tell you about Stamps.com. As the Stamps.com cowboy, there's a lot to discuss. What makes me the Stamps.com cowboy? I write a stamp, I don't know. <laughs> if you're looking for ways to skip the trip to the post office and dodge all that hectic holiday shopping traffic, why not save time and money with Stamps.com? Stamps.com lets you compare rates, print labels, and access exclusive discounts on UPS, USPS services all year long. It just makes sense, especially if your business sends more mail and packages during the holidays. I send a lot of packages. Them tumbleweeds ain't gonna roll themselves. Actually, that's exactly what they do. I'm a terrible Stamps.com cowboy. But whether you're selling online or running an office or side hustle, Stamps.com can save you so much time, money, and stress during the holidays. Access all the post office and UPS shipping services you need without taking the trip, and get discounts you can't find anywhere else, like up to 40% off USPS rates and 76% off UPS. Going to the post office instead of using stamps.com is kind of like taking the stairs instead of the elevator. Just going up a couple of floors, sure, take the stairs. Walking up 30 flights a day, you could use a break. I don't know what an elevator is because I'm a stamps.com cowboy. I don't even know what a dot com is. Probably should have put more thought into this character. But if you spend more than a few minutes a week dealing with mail and shipping, stamps.com is a lifesaver. You'll save so much time and money, you'll wonder why you didn't start sooner. And right now, we've got a special offer for you. You can save time and money this holiday season with Stamps.com by signing up at Stamps.com slash nostalgia for a special offer that includes a four-week free trial, free postage, and a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. That's Stamps.com slash nostalgia for your special offer today. Say, what time is it? I don't have a watch, I'm a cowboy, but if I did, Bet I get it from movement. Now that's a transition. In a tiny apartment in Southern California, two college dropouts teamed up to create a watch company that broke all the rules. With fair prices, unexpected colors, and clean, original designs, movement grew into one of the fastest growing watch brands, shipping to over 160 countries across the globe. But I know what you're thinking. No, I don't, because I don't have psychic powers. So let me tell you more about movement. Now, movement has expanded into blue light glasses that protect your eyes from your screens, minimalist jewelry, and more style essentials that don't break the bank, all designed out of their California headquarters. I especially like this watch I got online. 
It's so clean and sleek, and gets a lot of looks turning my way. Mostly because other cowboys don't know what a watch is, and they think I'm a wizard. Movement watches have the look and quality of a $400 to $500 watch you're paying for at a department store, but cost a fraction of the price because they were built online and own their process from start to finish. You get a beautiful watch shipped right to your door for free, and if you don't love it, you can ship it right back for free. But let me also tell you about the blue light glasses because I can't think of a joke about them right now. I've got to spend all day in front of my computer, whatever that is, and my ever scroll blue light filtering and glasses are a game changer. It really helps with the eye strain and poor sleeping patterns. And I love the modern style of the frames. So what are you waiting for? This bit to get old too late for that? Join the movement! If you want to elevate your look with style that doesn't break the bank, then join the movement and get 15% off today. With free shipping and free returns. By going to mvmt.com slash nostalgia. Again, that's mvmt.com slash nostalgia for 15% off with free shipping and free returns. I'm a cowboy, so I guess I better walk into that sunset. formulaic as the whole house chores is teaching you routine is, some of these workarounds are pretty clever. For example, I like constantly spinning her around until she figures out she has to maneuver her head differently so she doesn't get dizzy. Little touches like that are kind of creative. But she still isn't ready to do the big move she saw when she first entered the ballet school. I'm ready to do that crazy jumpy thing. That crazy jumpy thing is called le grand jeté. It's French for crazy jumpy thing. Again, good guess. <laughs> Victor and Felice step out for the night when Victor accidentally lets it slip that she's posing as Camille. The next day, Regine confronts her at the school. I want her put in prison! <gasps> she stole my life! <laughs> too much. Okay. When Kate McKinnon is telling you that, it really is too much. The teacher is still impressed with how far she's come, though, so he says he will hold one last audition between Camille and not Camille. See, kids? Lying can get you places! You have also shown great promise, and you've worked hard and shown your dedication. You must have a good teacher. She might be raising a liar, but she's fine. Is that also clear to you, madame? Clear. She did not have that many teeth in her head a moment ago. All right, better get to practicing or get some dick. Tonight, 7 p.m. I should train. You don't need to train. I imagine you would make love to me naturally. Oh, oh, you mean the dancing? Oh, yeah, you don't need that either. She snaps at her teacher pretty out of nowhere when she advises she should rehearse instead of going with Rudy. And this is after she gives her the beloved dancing shoes she used to wear. Rudy's waiting for me. Stay. No, you're not my mom. Okay, that's five punches on the card. You are officially a bitch. She still meets up with Rudy, but Victor is there to stop them because the story is awful. To be fair, this is how I expect a French fight to go down. You're both idiots! Felicity decides she's fed up, though, and doesn't accept either of them. She goes back ready to ask Odette to train her before the big day, or she runs away. Because we haven't done our looking over the city trouble trope, and she shows up unprepared the next day. You know she started at literally the best school. If she fails, there's tons of other ones she can go to. Camille, you will have the honor of dancing Clara in the Nutcracker. You will play the role of first twat. Uh-oh, sky's cloudy. That means our gloomy third act is about to start. Did you think it would end here, little rat? No! Regine sends Felice back to the orphanage with Odette looking on. And of course, you're fired. Fired, what a fun word. Did she invent that phrase? What was that about? When she gets back, she doesn't muster up the energy to try and escape anymore, making the owners bizarrely feel bad. She's lost her spirit. <laughs> she doesn't even sweep with as much passion anymore. It wasn't us trying to kill her dreams every day, was it? She has a dream that for once isn't repeated animation, but is still pretty damn vague. It's of her mother, and she simply says, follow her dreams. We're not given any backstory to who she was or where she went. Never give up on your dreams. Maybe she was drunk as hell, and when she threw the music box in the air, it landed like this. Hey, I'm just trying to fill in the holes. Which I think is what the doctor said after it landed on her. <sighs> oh, good. She has her passion back, so we can beat it out of her again. 
Even Mario Slippy is so touched, he drives her back to the school while giving some painfully ADR advice. Never give up, Felicia. This is where you belong. It's more of a home than I could ever give you. Well, it's better than the line he improvised. Holy underwear! We've got to protect our phony baloney job! You wild bitch. She reconciles with Odette and Victor, but there's still one hoe who needs to be put in her place. Tonight these seats will be full. Paris will be looking at me. Okay, I'm sorry, I've run it through a machine, I've checked with scientists. There is literally no way this can be taken seriously. Don't believe me, see if these sound effects go a little too well with it. I better be able to say most unorthodox! So, it on, I guess, as the two girls dance throughout the entire theater with Felice literally sticking the landing, making the, I know it's not the term, but they used it more than the actual term, crazy jumpy thing. This forces the instructor to ask the ultimate question. Why do you dance? Because... my mother makes me? Ha! The other has no mother, so we automatically win! It was there with my mom when I was a baby, and it's here now thanks to Odette. Felice's answer is so poetic, even Camille has to accept she's more qualified. She should dance. A shame about her bad knee. What bad knee? Oh! So you know the drill. Felice gets the part, everyone reconciles, the night of the big show arrives, and everyone lives happily ever after. What the fuck? <laughs> you cannot help him. Well, Victor's dead. Or at least he should be, as a totally out of nowhere second climax begins where Regine tries to murder Felice over and over. Oh, uh, what the hell is happening? It's Hammer time. When an MC Hammer reference is the least weird thing in your period piece. Chasing your girl up the statue, trying to kill her. What? And also, I wet myself. Even the pee joke seems less weird compared to everything else. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses, and I'll smash them with this hammer! We'd like to thank Miss Andrew's third grade class for writing the end of this movie. Okay, Victor saves her. Well, maybe we can put this craziness behind us. Man, they really want you to forget there was any chance this could be good, didn't they? Even the statue is silently judging this climax. <laughs> Okay, I'll give this movie two extra points if they give her the Clayton death from Tarzan. <laughs> oh, I suppose killing your movie is as good a death as any. Felicity makes it to the show. She stands on her tippy toes to kiss Victor, even though they're the exact same height. And even the teacher kisses Odette. I had no idea they were even a couple in this, but it is a Weinstein production, so maybe that part doesn't matter as much. Oh, trust me, I'd like to after watching this. Leap exclamation point is not a very good movie. I get the feeling the original French version was better as a lot of the dated jokes, songs, and ADR lines seem clumsily added. But I guess I can say for a little kid's film, it's probably harmless. There are good moments of animation, and it is nice that a decent sized budget was given to a smaller story about a kid just wanting to be a ballerina. But it ranges from formulaic and boring to hilariously head scratching. Those moments at least are memorable, but most of the other moments, in my opinion, simply aren't worth jumping up and down for. On the plus side, I don't think this movie is going to be all over the place like it was before. Hey, critic? Do you think this is going to date the video? It's never stopped us before. You are here because your mother sells the best prime rib in Paris! Hey, Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out, and uh, this week we're doing one I think we might have done before, but they're doing something pretty cool. Uh, it is the uh, West Suburban Community Food Pantry, and what they're doing, now that we've started uh, November here, uh, is that they're doing this thing where if you donate uh, $50, you can feed a family for Thanksgiving. Uh, and when you think about how much like uh, food costs on Thanksgiving and everything, uh, I mean, that's something that's really not a ton to 
to ask. I mean, Grant, I know there's going to be a lot of people that are still going to be, you know, having difficulty and stuff like that. But even if so, this is really a great uh, charity to share. This is just a great idea, donating $50 to feed a family for Thanksgiving. And I just saw it at the local grocery store, and I, I usually see it, like, every year. And I can't remember if we've actually, like, put attention on that or not, donating $50 to feed a family for Thanksgiving. So definitely uh, see if this is something that you can do or you're interested in doing. Check out the site as well. It's really, really great. And if you're not able to give this Thanksgiving again, and there's a lot of people that are in uh, difficult circumstances, just share the link. I mean, there's so much good that uh, Canon is being done, and you can be a big part of that. So definitely share the link if you can, or donate if possible, because this is a really, really good charity that does really good work. Thank you so much.